Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Siskind. I am a jazz pianist and I'm the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano, as well as a series of three books that are called the Jazz Piano Fundamentals series. You can get these all at a discount at my website if you buy them together. Today I want to talk to you about one of these things that is just absolutely essential to the jazz piano style, which is what I call tonicization. Tonicization. Um, and this is so important because it's probably the principal way where we add chords that aren't on a lead sheet. And it's one of the ways to identify yourself as a sophisticated jazz pianist rather than just some guy who kind of memorized some voicings. Okay, so the basic concept of tonicization is this. You know, it's called tonicization because whatever chord we're on, we're gonna pretend like it's the tonic, the one chord in a key center. So let's just say we're on a C major chord. Um, that means that we can ornament this chord. We can basically make it more C major-y by adding in five chords, okay? And when we're coming up with five chords, the five chords are the things that are tonicizing the G, or sorry, that are tonicizing the C. And five chords are gonna be based on the fifth scale degree of the target. And they're always gonna be dominant seventh. Okay? So whenever you have any kind of a C chord, you're going to use a G7 chord to tonicize that C. So this makes so much sense if we're on a long C major vamp. Do you hear those G7s that I'm adding in? just creates a little bit of motion. Now, I'm a believer that you almost always want to add some kind of an altered tone when you have a dominant seventh chord. So we're usually going to add a flat nine and or a flat 13 to these dominant seventh chords. So that's the idea of tonicization. Whatever chord we're on, we're going to add in that five chord and then resolve it back, right? And that is key, I should say, is that we don't get to just hang out on the five chord. We have to resolve it back to that original chord. So what if we're looking at Tune Up by Miles Davis? Although, I don't know, Miles Davis said he wrote all these tunes that it turns out he didn't actually write. So let's take this first chord just in isolation. Let's say we're playing a really slow version of tune-up, which is not how Miles played it, but let's just say hypothetically. Okay, that's just a lot of time to be hanging out on an E minor seven. Again, total hypothetical. So one of the things that we can do is we can throw in a tonicization. In this case, it's gonna be B7. We'll go from E minor seven to B seven back to E minor. So All right, why B seven? B is the fifth scale degree of E, and it's always gonna be a dominant chord. What if I'm hanging out and I'm bored on this A seven? We're gonna put in an extra E7 and resolve back to A7. And then much more realistically, there's actually two whole bars on D major. So here it's actually you know a relatively common thing because we're just so long on one chord that we would add in the tonicization. So we're gonna add in an extra A7 to D major. Okay, so it's gonna be overkill. This is just an exercise, but let me show you what this would sound like if I'm comping, I'm adding in these extra tonicization.
If you're not listening for that, it actually sounds pretty normal, especially when you add in those flat nines and flat 13s. Those really help to smooth it out. So I really suggest making sure that you use those alterations on the dominant chords. Okay, so that's one way of tonicizing is, you know, we're hanging out on a chord, we're gonna essentially create tension, release. A little bit of tension and then we get back. Another way of tonicizing is leading into the chord, basically creating a more dramatic arrival. So if we're hanging out on E minor, then we might play an E7 as the tonicization of A7. Okay, so the goal is to target the A7 chord and we're using E7 to do that. Now, in this case, we're definitely gonna need to put a sharp nine or we're gonna at least need to accommodate the sharp ninth in the melody. But it sounds fine to use that sharp nine. Now, what about leading into D major? Well, in this case, A already is. So, okay, so the tonic, tonicization leading to D major would be A7. And in this case, that doesn't really change the chord, right? It's, it already was A7, now it's A7. But sometimes what people will do is they'll go from a chord with fewer alterations to a chord with more alterations to kind of imply this extra motion. slight difference. A7, no alterations. A7, lots of alterations. So let me play this progression for you now with these leading tonicizations added. Do you hear the way those chords lead into the new chord? Okay, so it's a little confusing for some students because as I'm doing this, you know, this chord does not belong to this measure in particular. This chord happens to belong to that measure, right? And if I'm going from D major, you know, if I'm leading into this next line, then I'll do an A7 again to lead to the D minor. I have two different directions I'm thinking about going. Let's go, we're gonna go talk about tritone subs first. So recall that whenever you have a dominant chord, you can replace it via the rule of the tritone substitution with a dominant chord, a diminished fifth, did I say that right? Or augmented fourth, oh wait, yes. So this is kind of cool when it comes to tonicization. So let's take this first scenario again. I'm gonna add in a B7. And this is a dominant chord, so I can do a tritone substitution for this B7, which would create an F7. And so this creates half step motion. So instead of having, you know, a lot of times when we think about tonicization, instead of thinking what's the fifth, we can actually think what's a half step above. Same thing here. Here's your five chord. Right, so this is your traditional tonicization, but we could do the tritone substitution, which results in this chord just a half step up. Same thing here, D7, or sorry, D major seven to A major, to A7, back to D major seven. If I wanna do the tritone substitution, it results in a chord a half step up. So that can be a really useful trick when you're working with tonicization, if it's just a little faster for you. It's not gonna sound really any different. And in fact, what can be nice about it is you might not have to um, change the 13th and the 9th if you're using the um, if you're using the tritone substitution. Why? Let me show you. So let's take a, let's take this D7, D major seven. Okay. So here's like a regular A7. Sorry, that's written as a D flat instead of a C sharp, but you guys are smart. You get the idea. 
If I use the flat 13th, we get this, a little bit more colorful, right? Now, if I just play an E flat 7 with no alterations, look, it's the same as the A7 flat 13th, and that's part of the magic of the tritone substitution. So I think for a lot of people, using the half step above, the dominant chord a half step above, is a really nice trick that gets you to your end result faster. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, because I can read your minds. Um, you're thinking, well, how can I add in chords that the improviser is not going to know about? And I have two answers to that question. The first is that in jazz, we can accommodate a lot of dissonance. I made a video about this recently. I'll try to, I'll try to add it to, um, to like that screen down there that shows other videos. But um, jazz accommodates a lot of dissonance. So if I'm improvising using E Dorian, and I go, I use that tonicization, you can't even hear it. Doesn't bother anybody. So first of all, we just have to appreciate that jazz can accommodate a lot of dissonance. That's part of the style. But the second thing to mention is that improvisers absolutely also use tonicization. So as you're practicing using tonicization and you're comping in your left hand, you might practice also changing chords in your right hand. And I think this gives you like kind of fun options. You could tonicize in your right, but not your left. You could tonicize in your left, but not your right. Uh, you could tonicize in both. And that gives you kind of these fun things to play around with, right? I could play. You know, I could kind of imply some, some different progressions in my right hand without changing the left as well. So improvisers can also tonicize. All right, that was a lot of information in a short period of time, but hopefully it gives you a sense of what tonicization is. Um, tonicization comes up quite a bit in both Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 2, which is purple, and then Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 3 is all about modal and modern jazz, and tonicization, there's kind of some nice exercises with tonicization in there. Actually, before I, before I sum up, this is a totally crazy thing to do, but I'm gonna see if I can find one of the tonicization exercises that comes up in Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 3. Call me crazy, if you must. Um, ha, I found it so fast. So, and now I lost it again, but I'm gonna get back there. So here's improvisation exercise six, practicing tonicization. Again, this is from the blue book. Uh, Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 3. And basically what it's having you do is you're going to go up minor chords in half steps. C minor, D flat, D. And you're going to tonicize in two ways. So you're, you're basically staying on this C minor for eight measures. Going from bar th uh, four to bar five, you're going to tonicize, you're going to reestablish the chord. And then going from bar eight to the next chord, you're going to anticipate that next chord. And you want to go through all 12 keys. So I'm, I'm going to be on C minor. Hear that tonicization? like this exercise to practice tonicization that's in jazz piano fundamentals book three all right i gotta sign up sign off here if you like this video uh, comment with something about a gin and tonic because we're talking about tonicization i'll see y'all soon take care